The World Series ended last week in historical fashion. But before we talk about the ending, I want to talk about how it started and what seemed to be very, very odd in my mind. You see, the Houston Astros were favored to beat the Washington Nationals by 65%. So we start off the series, and the Nationals, they do the unthinkable. They win game one, something that every expert and analyst said was impossible for them to do. They won. Now we go back to the analysts and we listen to what they're saying and they're saying it's impossible. They got lucky with game one. There is no way they're gonna win two games in Houston. It's not happening. And guess what? They win the second game. Now all of a sudden, the 65% chance that was in Houston's favor flipped. And the Washington Nationals winning two of two games in Houston, coming home for three games we're now favored by 81% to win the World Series. And up two games to none, they start their games at home, and they go on to lose all three, something that nobody saw coming. And now all of a sudden, these same expert analysts that originally had Houston winning by 65% chance, then went against them by 81%, now said, oh, you know what, Houston's gonna win. <laughs> They're coming home for two more games. They're up three to two, they have their best pitchers on the mound, they got this one. This is their uh, championship to win. Even in game seven, when they had the lead before Howie Kendrick hit the eventual home run that gave them the lead, the Houston Astros had an 87% chance to win at that moment in time. And we obviously all know how that all turned out. Yes, sir. I don't, I don't two very crying boys. Boys, we as human beings, we seek for meaning. We seek for understanding. And we've developed a logical equation to help us understand our life experiences that I would like to write on the board. And it looks very complex. One plus one equals two. two. Whoa. This is the equation. It's a very simplistic logical equation, and you know what happens when we apply our life into this logic? Life makes sense, it's very peaceful, it's very comforting, and it makes us feel good. And I'll give you some examples to prove it. Because there are several people and things that are in our lives that we apply this logic to. Let's start with the most important one, God. We do this with God all the time. Right? We do something good, we get a reward, equals, God loves me, I'm a great guy, I'm rolling. Right? Let's look at the next people that we look to work with. How about our parents? We want a good dinner that we like when we get home, but sometimes it's not on the table. If I wanted a good dinner, plus mom didn't put one on the table for me, it must mean she hates me. Has to be. If she liked me, she would have given me the dinner that I wanted. Must be she hates me. Has to be. And it works, and it fits with the logic, right? Now everything's make, everything makes sense in the world, and all is right. Last example. Our lovely, wonderful, hardworking teachers, right? We have an equation. I wasn't doing anything, plus I got an incident report. Must be the teacher's an idiot. Teacher's incompetent. This is obvious. It's very apparent to me. Right? So we have this logical equation that we apply to our own lives. One plus one equals two. And this is what works for us. But boys, there's a problem. There's a flaw within the, the rationale in which we use to insert meaning into our lives because not always does this equation hold true. Because what happens, let's go to the God example, right? I do something good and I got a reward and I'm, a, I'm an awesome person. But what happens when it doesn't work out that way? I do the right thing, I don't get a reward. God hates me, right? That's the natural thought that we put into ourselves because it has to be. If God liked me, he would have given me the reward. He did it the last time, all of a sudden he didn't do it. What gives, right? Let's go to the parents' equation. Sometimes I don't ask for a dinner that I want, and yet still mom puts it on the table. 
Aha, it must be that she wants something from me. There wouldn't be any other reason why she would put that on the table for me. It must be she has an agenda. She needs something from me. <laughs> Same thing with the teachers. Sometimes we do misbehave. We don't get an incident report. The teacher's still an idiot. They're still in company. Right? This is the way we still... <laughs> so there's a flaw in the premise. There's something that's missing that's very problematic. I want to share a personal story with you all. So everybody in this room, I believe, knows the current state in the relationship with myself and my father. Right? The last time I saw him, the last time I spoke to him, I was in the 10th grade. I was 15 in the 10th grade. I'm 30 years old right now. It's been 15 years since I saw him. And for a very long time, I applied this logic and it left me feeling a lot of things. Guilt, anger, disappointment, because it didn't make sense to me, right? The logic wasn't working within this equation. And so it caused me to come up with a new equation. And I believe if we can hold true with this new equation, it might help us make more sense of the world around us which is ultimately what we are seeking to get. So the new equation is going to look like this. It's going to be 1 plus, two. plus 1 plus, three. plus x equals real life. So let me explain. My thinking here is going to assume something that's wild and crazy beyond our imagination. Let's just theorize and let's see if this is possible for us to own this information. It might be, it's somewhat possible that we don't know everything that's going on in our lifetime. I don't know. It's a crazy wild concept, but let's just go with it. In some of these other examples, let's stick with the teacher one, because I think this is the one that's going to really hit home for most of us. Yes, sir. In the old equation, right, one, I didn't talk, plus one, I got an incident report, equals two, teacher hates me, hmm. teacher's an idiot. Let's work with the same idea in a new equation. One, I didn't do anything, plus one, I got an incident report, plus X. X is the teacher made a mistake, or the teacher thought they saw something, but really they didn't see the right thing. And equals the Let's see what that might equal. Who wants to be a volunteer? What would your reaction be as a student if you understood that X represented the teacher made a mistake, which is possible because we're human beings? Stephen Bennon, what would you do in that case? It's unfair. Um, so I'll what would you do? I'll go talk to the dean. What would you do? Guys, seriously, what would you do, Henry? If, the, if I knew that the teacher made a mistake, I would speak to the teacher at that point. I would speak to the teacher, and I would look to clear up the discrepancy. Look at what each equation can ultimately provide to us, and I want you as a student to choose. What do you feel is more beneficial to you and your well-being? Is it more beneficial to leave information out of the equation and assume that you know how everything is working? I know, teacher hates me. I know. How do you know? Because I just know. I know. Or are you willing to be a bit vulnerable and do something that very few human beings are willing to do, which is to say to themselves, maybe there's some more information that I don't know. Because I believe if the, ad, if the experts and the analysts of the people that were evaluating the World Series did such a thing, maybe, just maybe, they wouldn't use language like, the Nationals don't stand a chance. Really? They don't? Because they won. So obviously there was a chance that they stood, and they did it. So boys, you ultimately have to decide what type of person you want to be and how you want to live your life. I'm offering the premise that those that want to live in conventional wisdom, in this old model of logic, end up living confused and angry. That's something that I'm going to put out there on the table. It doesn't mean it always happens,
But likely, your chances are that when you experience certain things that don't fit into this faulty logic, not going to end well for you. You're going to be upset. You're going to be maybe having a temper tantrum. I don't know. Or choice number two. Be willing to accept that there are things above your comprehension. There are things that maybe you are not privy to. And in my own respective example, that's something that I've had to just take with me. I haven't spoken to my father in 15 years, and I can't tell you for the life of me why that is. But I'm willing to be vulnerable enough to say, it could be that there's information that I don't hold that prevents my ultimate relationship from existing between me and my father. And I'm willing to explore and to discover and do whatever I have to take in order to get there. But I don't have to live a life of anger, a life of guilt, a life that I don't want to live. You guys have the same opportunity to decide what will you choose. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.